And we've got uh, the Baba Yaga patch notes going. Three hours of sleep, let's go. Here's the story of a lovely caster. Well, that is an interesting start. <laughs> I guess Bart is on this one. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Witch of the Woods Update Show. I'm Titan Isaiah, your host for today, and our show is just packed with awesome stuff for you all. We've got balance, ton of awesome skins, and the reveal of our newest goddess, Baba Yaga. Am I still We're super excited, so we seem a bit more animated than usual, that's why. We're going to go ahead and kick things off with bonus balance, and here to break things down with me are Ajax and Pond from the design team. How are you guys doing? Wait, is this the whole time? Doing well, good to see you. Yep, doing pretty well. Awesome. So let's get right into bonus balance that's going to be live next week on April 7th. No items this go around, so we're going to start off with gods, and Kamazots is up first. Screech is going to be seeing a this decrease so in the physical power buff from Echo. So what we've done with bonus balance is, since there was a little bit of confusion and people wondering why what qualifies as bonus balance, what doesn't, we're trying to pivot it towards being specifically those meta god nerfs. The things that we feel like people okay, are good. most anxious to have. Like people generally want us to act quickly. That structure. And balance in this specific realm. So for this patch we're gonna be doing only meta god nerfs as the bonus balance. And uh, we're also, Isaiah and his team are working on a lot of ways to better clarify and better um, show and display what types of balance is going to be launching at what days. And I really appreciate you for that. But the, from the design team, we wanted to approach it well as well in a little more categorical sense. So that's why you're going to see this bonus balance be a little smaller here. And that's why it is specifically only top played, top picked gods being nerfed. For sure. Cool. So Kamazots, we saw him get buffed a little while back. We buffed the leap range as well as some other effects, and we've already reverted those other effects, and he's still like an absolute powerhouse in specifically high high MMR ranked solo lane and pro play. So now we're reverting. Huh, funny, everyone was telling me how it's the jungler now. How much power that leap range really did. <laughs> I that didn't that buy it. really had huge effects on Pawn. Yeah, that definitely does. That changes like the scaling on his two. It changes the scaling on his heal. Like that's a big deal. It's going to be changing. There's just a lot that this power like augments that. I don't know why they are so quiet of him in the lane when they had time phase. to animate this whole thing. But... When you're trying to actually box hey. him in the solo lane. Next up, we've got Kugel Khan, a guy that's been kind of resilient to the nerfs that we've kind of been giving him over the past couple patches. We're going to be making some adjustments to Slipstream. We're increasing the cooldown and we're also decreasing the slow immunity period. Yeah, Slipstream is one of those abilities that I think for a really Whoa, long time we're like, lot. oh, it's just a movement ability, but the amount of distance it lets cuckoo cover the amount of speed he immediately gets his ability to close in and get like a one-off on a target and also the slow immunity that persisted afterwards really allowed him to be slippery and and slip right through team fights so we're just increasing the cooldown on that so players slippery. have more opportunities to play around it, especially in the late game and the slow immunity is is being reduced so that you actually can jump on him more quickly with slows and actually slow him down some we know some people out there are getting a little fatigued with cuckoo con nerfs we we really did buff him a, a very large amount through those changes a few a few yes. months ago so we're still working to get him back to a good point of balance seems like the god's still performing way better than he has historically he's been pretty resilient to the nerfs but it is starting to make a statistical impact last round of changes did make a pretty good statistical impact hopefully this will be the last one we have to touch on him for a little while Definitely. All right, next up on the list for bonus balance gods, we've got Persephone. She got a shift in the last anime, update. So creepy. We got a lot of community feedback that it actually felt like it was actually a buff. Uh, so we're going to be making Whoa. some changes to grab oh, wait, no, death. That's the death. We're going to reduce the projectile speed on her ultimate ability. Yeah, that so Persephone sense. in that shift, uh, we saw players essentially be able to use the plants more effectively. That was like the big change. And we did a few nerfs to also tone down some of the damage it did, as well as the damage of the ultimate. Um, after seeing all the numbers and seeing how people are playing with it, it does look like she got a little bit better overall, which is what we were going for. That's what we wanted for the shift, where she was a bit more uh, manageable for players. The the kind of complexity and clunkiness of placing plants and utilizing them has been removed. And so with that, we want to make one more adjustment to her ultimate, where it's just really fast. It's sometimes difficult to avoid. We're going to slow it down some so you have more opportunity to react to it coming towards you. Um, if it flies past you, you can get away from the wall that it might collide with a bit. Uh, you can get more distance before it actually collides. Just just making sure that players have more opportunity to play around the ultimate. Really, we just want to make it clear, we are open to nerfing Persephone. We know that her statistics are on the lower end, but we know that's also because she's difficult. She's incredibly strong at high MMR and at pro play. We're really trying to make sure we balance her for 
all skill levels. So we're open to nerfing her. I think this is going to be a pretty impactful. She already had more nerfs high skill levels. right before the release of the last awesome. patch, by the way. Right. And then last up on the list for God Which in bonus balance forget, is Yemoja. Yemoja is going to be seeing a nerf to Bouncing Bubble. We're decreasing the magical power scaling, and we are adjusting the slow duration, decreasing that a little bit on that ability. Uh, Moonstrike, we're decreasing the magical power scaling on the inner damage. And oh, on Yemoja. Mending Waters, we are decreasing Gradually getting the magical balanced. power scaling on the heal and decreasing the magical power scaling on the shield. Yeah, so a lot of wow. kind of like bruiser -y nerfs, but this does affect support Yemoja as well. Um, just in general, the ability for her to actually throw out a lot of bubble and moon strikes, the ability for her to throw out a lot of the healing and shielding from Mending Waters... Uh, even though she doesn't necessarily build that much power even in the support role, she is getting it from her boots in a lot of cases. She often builds at least one bruiser item. Um, and so this is going to just reduce that time on your, like, if she lands a good stun lock on you or if she gets a whole bunch of healing out in the team fight, it's just going to be reduced from what it currently is. Um, and the slow adjustment on uh, the bubble also is going to decrease her ability to confirm that follow-up stun chain. Yemoja, people felt like we kind of missed an opportunity to nerf her last update. The character mm -hmm. has been responding well to the nerfs, just approaching a better point statistically. But we heard a lot of feedback about the character still being really strong. So as Pond kind of mentioned, we, we really strived in this nerf to make sure we adjusted the different all the different play styles that Yemoja has. We wanted to make sure she was still nerfed slightly. Even if you're building full support Yemoja, you get a little bit of a nerf here. If you're playing more of a mage Yemoja, you're going to see a larger nerf here. All right. Well, that wraps it up for bonus balance that's coming your way next week on April 7th. So now that we've got bonus balance changes done, we want to give you guys your first look at all the skins that are coming your way next week. And we're going to kick things off with Murder of Crows Sobek. And this one is looking oh, super awesome. Love this. Shout outs to Wolf Dog Art for providing this concept. That's so cool. This has been one that's kind of been floating around in the community. We're going to talk over this time. for a second. So we're super excited. Because what I'm wondering is this still... Um, just the details and stuff. They, they mentioned they want to do a, a full... He's really looking really creepy. Possibly do a full also physical item pen rework. Passive trigger, and this kind of basically... Armor, like magical glowing armor on him. And there's like a kind of a new... If it's not coming this patch, it's well, unlikely it's, cool. it's coming, I think. Nice. They said it would be like 7.3-ish latest. I think we're at 7.4 now. One of the Grim Omens event. So we're moving right along to the second skin from Chapter 1 of Grim Omens that we're going to be looking at today. And that's going to be the Goat Kernan. Frisbee! Oh my gosh. And he is styling. Does he actually throw it as a basic attack? Yes. It's finally a Frisbee skin. I don't know if the Smite Universe Or what? It actually looks like the render, the early render of it. 10, 15 years. I started the Ultimate Frisbee game at High res Studios where we have 10 to 20 developers playing Frisbee every week. And I'm so stoked for this. Yeah, this one is looking awesome. This is another addition to our Smite Tropolis universe. Shout out to Anna Bunch for creating the initial art and the theme for us. And I love these skins because they give a modern day take on all the gods and gives them a new personality. It's really fun. Yeah, there's so many like little background bits in the card oh, yeah, art. I do see Anubis. And uh, this, the, Kernanos is assuming a little bit more of a hipster vibe, you know, in the universe. Like Thoth was uh, a hey geek, guys, if you, and Anubis if was a jock, like, and then here we have... If you Kernanos like this type of skin, more, please uh, let me know in the comments, because I always want to know, or, uh, and, and why. Because I always want to know, like, he is definitely the like are people actually enjoying this? <laughs> I, I'm just wondering. And speaking of Chapter 1 of the Grim Omens event, we want to remind you guys about they keep making them, so. Aphrodite, the chapter reward for Chapter 1. If you unlock all six skins in the chapter one chest, you get this skin for free. Yeah, also to be noted, if you did the buy, I know that one right here. This skin at April 7th. That's that's going to be the way we're doing the rewards going forward. You won't get the individual chapter rewards right away, but you will get them as soon as they launch. This skin, we really pushed ourselves to make some more radical changes to Aphrodite's armor and add more um, assets to her art and to her silhouette because we've been getting that feedback. I think people are really excited for it. Yeah, this one's going to be super Add awesome. more assets well, to Aphrodite. I don't think she needs Grim that Omens one. Chapter one. We're moving right along, and next up we've got Knight of Storms Susana. Oh my gosh, he looks so good. This oh. one's amazing. The model is like better than the car. Oh, no, not better. They're both amazing, of course, but just the <laughs> model turned out so well. It fits Susano so well. He's like the bold, daring adventurer, and it gives him such a unique take from his other skins and his and his feel. I, I love this one. Did he just win a bar fight? <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I, I didn't like the style, like, actually. Super fire. I saw the I first render, I was the like, game mm -hmm. that he is the main character uh -huh. of. 
right? It does look like he did just in this in this card art. He just won the bar fight. There's the people behind him that are like, <laughs> "Ooh, he's, shouldn't have fought that guy." Yeah, he's got some <laughs> coin for it. Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, I'll buy you a drink." Exactly. Yeah, just buy you a drink with the money I just stole from you. So this one's gonna be available April seventh in the Sword Hero chest. And we've got one more skin that we want to talk about that's heading your way next week, and that is Pharaoh's Curse Cabracken. Oh yeah, big community win here. Shoutouts to Rob Draws for the concept. Players really showed up and oh, I didn't know this Rob Draws into the stratosphere. And you know, cross pantheon skins can be a little tricky to execute, but Cabracken with his giant shields turning into a sarcophagus just made a really strong connection for the Egyptian crossover. So I'm loving how this skin turned out. My favorite Kali and Chalk skins are actually the the Norse Viking crossover event, and so like these Egyptian crossover like. I He's really like Pantheon well. crossovers. I love this theme. I don't know why they're yeah, saying I it's hard to do. Yeah, to kind of reimagine like, like characters that have been it. in the Smite universe <laughs> for a long time. It doesn't different. seem that complicated. And it looks like this is going to be in the crossover chest, well named. That's for sure. Definitely. Kind of a hint back <laughs> to the Egyptian mythology available in the crossover chest coming your way on a hint back. Mm, so that wraps hint. it up for all the skins coming out in the 7.3 bonus update, as we're calling it now. But we've got some community and esports news that we want to talk about, too. If you guys missed it, I'm not sure how you missed it, but we had a birthday last week, and we are still partying. Lots of stuff going on in-game. Every day, a new free reward, right? I wonder what yeah, happened so if the camera broke or what. Community-created <laughs> avatars and jump stamps. All you have to do is log in and play a game, and you get those rewards for free. Every day, there's a different reward, but <sighs> if you miss a day, then you hmm. miss the reward. So be sure to log in and keep playing those games. All right, and then the last thing we have up for you guys is the SPL start date. It got announced a couple weekends ago. As you guys know, we had to push things back a little bit just due to the concern. Uh, oh my God, I have to we talk over this so I don't get demonetized. Sure all <laughs> players and staff remain safe. But SPL is now kicking off on April 4th, and we're actually kicking the season nice. off for the first few weeks with online play. So same SPL, yeah, I mean, that's a smart move. <laughs> playing from home. Be sure to head over to the esports and live streams hub to lock in your votes to get those viewer points. And if you want to check out the schedule, you can head over to our new fancy Smite Pro League website. I know it's been a long time coming. Players have been wanting a new website, and it is super awesome. So head over to SmiteProLeague.com for all of That's actually SPL supposed to be really good this time, including yeah, bills and stuff like that as well. I know, right? I've been fiending for some esports, and the SEC and SOC have been holding me over for a little bit. But there's nothing like the SPL, so we're super excited. Those have been really fun to watch, honestly. Yeah. I'm, I'm really enjoying them. And the, the voting page on the new esports tab is amazing. I love how you can see how people are voting. You can kind of see who the favorites are. Maybe we'll have some upsets. You know, kick off the season. You never really know who's going to have the meta figured out. Like, it's going to be really exciting. Yeah, I'm pumped to see how things pan out in our first professional sets of the season. So that wraps it up for community and esports news. We've still got a whole lot of show left for you guys. We'll be right back after this break. What? A break? Oh, this is very bad. No, it's just like the. <laughs> Guys, you remember that dad dating day game that came out like a year ago, two years ago maybe? That's definitely inspired by that, like 100%. Where you going? Stick around. Your time has come. Just you and me. <laughs> oh my god. This my guy will always make me laugh. Wait, are they actually gonna make these skins? Yeah, Dream Daddy was the game. Dream Daddy. Oh, okay, they did it as April Fool's, I was gonna say. Welcome back, everybody. Dream Deities headed your way soon on the Ouya. Make sure to check that out. You would be an absolute fool not to. I don't know about you guys, but I am definitely ready to ooh. I'd be down for those skins like so unironically. With the Witch of the Woods update, with some project more interesting updates. than the Smitopia in my So the good things that everyone's going to really notice right now is that clans have been disabled. We're doing this to reduce a lot of stress on Smite's backend servers. So, um, there's a lot of processes that are running with notifying people when their clan clan mates are logging on, logging off, queuing up, things like that. Um, just Taking all of that away temporarily is really helping with the high influx of players we're having due to everyone being, you know, staying home. 
we're also going to be adjusting certain queue times. So you might see queues go up or down a minute or two. Oh, it's being done so that queues don't all fire at once. You know, we adjusted this um, matchmaking to a timed queue system. This is done to improve matchmaking and to give players a little bit more consistency, but it does cause tons of matches to fire all at once, which is really tough on our servers, so we're adjusting that. There's a lot of other things we did. Isaiah wrote up a really nice oh, post about it on Reddit. Just because um, I have more players right now. More, right? Never mind. Yes, uh, I wrote up a post a couple days ago. Uh, it's still pinned on the front page of Reddit right there at the top. If you guys want more information on what we've done to kind of help ease strain on servers and uh, plans that we have moving forward. Did you just say uh, ease our strain? Our continually monitoring things, and they're working around the clock to make sure that we oh no uh, ease strain never mind guys. it's been a, t it's I, been a I'm tricky for time right strain. now for everyone that's for sure so thank you for your patience through all this yeah, definitely all right let's get moving right along to project olympus uh with live with the launch of seven four we've got some improved anti-toxicity measures headed your way oh yeah i've been working with the design team a lot um specifically high-rise fish and then pon pon's help been helping out as well we really want to continue to improve smite's behavior policies the first thing we're doing uh, right now is we're increasing the punishments for hate speech or real life threats first time offenders are now going to be um if you're if you're co um, confirmed by support so this means you'll you'll be you know manually reviewed by one of our support employees they will be dishing out seven day bans for the first offense and perma bans for repeat offenses um, those used to be a little too soft. I think we really need to be All tougher right. on people there. This type of uh, language is just not what we want in the game. We, if sure. you're going to talk like that, don't play Smite. It's that simple. Definitely. Wow. Um, we're also doing some more tech improvements to make sure we can find players who are causing problems. We're improving the automated detection of uh, players who AFK as well as intentional feeders. Um, all of this is to help the support team make sure they can find the information they need when they're investigating an account. You know, sometimes these gameplay things can be difficult to to judge, and it takes a lot of time for a support member to go look at them individually. So we're just improving the tools they have on the back end to have the right data they need to, to find these people. For sure. All right, next up, esports and live streams. We're going to be adding some progress tracking and a notification for the weekly points reset. Yeah, this is going to help you keep track of how close you are to earning your cap of points for the week, and it sounds like when you, um, it's going to notify you when the points reset for the week. All right, next up, we're going to be doing some changes to I the think they're going to do so. We're actually revising no. a bunch of videos and streamline, streamlining them for an entirely new set. Yeah, this is a big one. Uh, we are doing this the company wide and of course we uh you know funny enough we were working through it on the paladins team was working through it and everyone on smite was like oh my gosh we need that why don't we have that and the answer is <laughs> we're getting it really really soon we were right after them um no big deal nothing to worry about but yeah all those videos like you kind of saw on the paladins team i know that people a lot have been discussing it uh, out in the smite community all that stuff is coming to smite it's going to be coming in throughout the pts um time so Expect those videos to stream in a little one at a time right, as we info upload videos? them. Or, you know, and it's getting you know, tricky working from home and uploading this update. Um, maybe some of the videos might not make it into the into the game right at first, but we're going to be updating all of those, the full suite of them. Um, they're just going to come in as they come in. Yes, our video team has been putting in a ton of work on those. Last time I checked, I think it was around 30 new tutorial videos for Smite I, that are going to be super helpful. I know they wow, got community awesome. members involved yeah. in that. Right, and then last up for Project Olympus, we've got like a user Smite. interface update. We're going to be updating the lighting Fortunate. sections on the God Screen, Order Lobby, and Chaos Lobby, just to kind of make things look a little bit more, uh, make them pop a little bit better. This is a this is like you know purely aesthetic, but I'm really excited for this. We have had some inconsistent lighting or some older types of lighting all throughout the client side. So everywhere in the main client UI, where you're browsing gods, um, you're you're picking and banning, etc. The lighting is very different from scene to scene and on god to god, and it makes for some confusing visuals. It makes for some visuals that don't look so good, or it makes for ones that just don't look like what the character really looks like when you're playing the game. So we've changed the lighting on all of those. Really makes the 3D models look so much better in the UI. I'm really excited about this one. Yeah. And then last but not least for user interface, we're adding percent penetration to the stat screen in-game. Of course, all the changes and shifts we did in Season 7 for cap, putting a cap on Percent Pen and caring more about it, now you'll be able to see how much Percent Pen you have and how close you are to the cap. Most definitely. All right, that wraps it up for Project Olympus. Now let's get into the balance changes that are heading your way with the Witch of the Woods update. 
we're going to kick things off with some game mode changes. And the first change is actually for all modes, jungle camp timers are now going to appear on the minimap for all camps at the start of the match. This is a huge quality of life. Mm. This is really nice. You can that tell really nice. clearly which uh, buffs are going to spawn at what time as soon as you load into a map on any game mode, especially helpful on maps like Conquest, where things spawn at a little slightly different timing at the beginning of the game, as well as Joust, like with keeping track of the red buff spawn. I'm so stoked about this feature. It is really nice. Yeah, especially well, on Joust, that red buff, I get lost there all the time where I'm like, oh, we're going for wave fight, and then I see the enemy team rotate over there. I'm like, oh, no, I'm going to be late. So two seeing that's going to be great. Oh, yeah, two now minutes. you can track it really well. Yes, this would be a, a huge quality of life change for the start of the match. I'm super excited to hop in the games and check it out. Next up for game modes, we've got Conquest, and we've got a big change here. Invader's Curse. Ajax, I'm going to let you take the reins on this one. So we're this is interesting. You know, we're talking about this before we've seen any pro play, but we've been in a lot of discussions with a lot of pro players, and we have been t clearly under made to understand that invading is still a very strong strategy, especially invading where your support is just harassing and trying to slow down the jungler. So we made a few changes in the beginning of this season to try to address invading, and our goal is to not overdo it at, at first, right? We wanted to do some smaller changes, give players ways to defend themselves through hog and awards, make sure that they have ways to counter the, the invade before we just go and do something extreme. So those changes were maybe a little too subtle because now we we are seeing that it's still happening and we want to make sure that we prevent it we are adding a new feature to the conquest map called the invaders curse that is a refreshing debuff area near the speed buff and back harpies camp and if you enter that area as an enemy god, so if you cross the map and enter it, on your, if you enter your own side of the map, you're fine. But if you cross the enemy's side into that area, you'll see some visual effects there, and you will be debuffed with 30% reduced healing, and that will include potions, even at the beginning of the game, 30% reduced movement speed, and 30% reduced attack speed. So this wow. is a pretty heavy-handed change that we really want to stop this type of invading now we hear that there's other invades happening sometimes blue buffs uh, having 2v2 fights and sometimes uh, purple buffs and those invades are actually causing some really interesting fights I was gonna say, those not intended. players are actually you know fighting or dying or getting first blooded or stealing a camp or whatever that's pretty interesting we're more open to that being part of the map but the part where uh support is literally just harassing a jungler and throwing away their own game progression just to slow down another class we, we find that that is as where we draw the line so we're willing to make a pretty intense change here and this is what we have that's today. definitely intense yeah this this 30 <laughs> percent uh reduced healing movement speed and attack speed makes it difficult to follow the jungler especially once they get speed buff um it makes it very difficult to box and trade effectively so if the the jungler tries to just turn and try and kill you he probably has a really good chance of doing it. I mean, and yeah, it's 30% this, slow. This area is relatively large. You have to walk through it to basically get to speed or get to back harpies. So if you overcommit and realize, oh, no, I actually need to get out of here, you have to go through all that area with that debuff that persists for a long time afterwards. It, it's it's If you're going to try and invade, it's going to be pretty much a death sentence walking in there. And just, yeah, this will only be active at the very beginning of the match. Oh, okay. Like the first one minute right now. So this will go away. <laughs> it's really just to make sure the jungler gets that clean start. Yes, I know there's a lot of community frustration around the invade meta, in quotation marks, uh, at towards the end of last season. And we really just want to kind of discourage that very early support invading on speed. So hopefully these heavy-handed changes have an effect and we'll see a deterrent from that. Next up, we're going to talk about Joust, and Joust has a lot of changes I was wrong then. Here. I thought that the new and changes to Duo would be good this, enough. Some changes to lane minions, where we're increasing the max HP, adding some XP reward scaling there. Buff camps overall looks like they're getting a huge buff in base HP, uh, along with the Phoenix and Titans. AJ, do you kind of want to go over some what? of the goals for these changes for Joust? Yeah, so we've been carefully watching Joust since the Season 7 launch, and we've been collecting a lot of feedback and a lot of data and looking for ways to tweak it to make it even more fun. So, first of all, we're addressing a few artistic and thematic issues, so we're going to do some lighting and color adjustments on the map yes. for people's um, you know, appreciation of the art. Like, we're seriously, also going to be adjusting the 
actual size of the middle lane, making it a little wider, we a lot of people felt constrained there. What? We That's also a lot had an already. issue where uh, minions were only increasing. So, you know, a lot of our minions and, and jungle camps now have a feature where they scale up in their tankiness or their rewards. This was happening only every three minutes on Joust. So now it's going to be happening every one minute. That means their, their tankiness is going to ramp up Ooh. a lot faster. So um, then there's okay. a lot of other changes here, but really these all come together towards a few key goals, which one of the main goals was we wanted to make it harder for people to take essentially the tower, the Phoenix and the Titan all in one push. So what you're going to see here is pretty big buffs to the health of the Titan and the Demon King. So that's going to make it harder to do all these objectives at once, the, Oh, as well as the Phoenix. So Phoenix, Titan, and Demon King all getting a lot of increased HP. You're also going to see increased I'm HP not sure on the I like red that. buff. So that one's a contested buff. It was a little too easy to, to capture, we felt like. You could that's oftentimes true. just completely steal it, even if your opponents were really close. We were going to have a little bit more people fighting over that one. But simultaneously, we're going to make actually the blue and the yellow a little bit easier to kill to make sure that people can do their little rotation before the game starts and when they're when they're rotating through the jungle throughout the game, they can get back to lane in time. Then finally, the lane minions. There was a little bit of a XP curve strangeness going on in this new joust where in the late game, players' level would really stagnate and their gold, though, would continue to move forward. So you would kind of get full builds, but you would only be like level 14 or something. Yeah, and that, feels, that felt really strange. So we're going to have lane minion increasing their XP uh, scaling so you're going to get better xp throughout the late game and this will be you know this will um, do a lot of good things as far as preventing snowballing as long as you can keep clearing your wave you should stay up and much, much closer and we're also adding an increased distance for shared xp on minions because joust is relatively dangerous like if you're playing a squishy character and you get too close to the wave the opponent's te team is just going to three-man wombo combo you and you just die so a lot of people play it a little bit safer. They play a little further back from their wave than they do in other game modes. And that actually causes a lot of people to miss the experience from their own minion wave, even though they feel like they're standing right there. And that's really frustrating, and people don't understand why they're getting behind in Joust. And oftentimes, this is the reason. So this is just going to be a big quality of life buff. This should help your team stay up in levels, um, even if they're playing safely. Yeah, and if you're playing the aggressive team, if you're playing like that Bacchus Sobek comp where you're trying to wombo combo, you actually have to play forward and actively zone them versus kind of just passively being around the wave. So it also kind of puts the onus on the team that's like trying to use that pressure to actually utilize it. That's a very good point. There's a lot of different places where this change is going to feel better. You know you yeah. have that one mage who likes to run up too far and like clear the whole wave without you and you like get nothing mm -hmm. and you're like, oh, come on. The biggest issue now of jealous. that should happen less like... You know, there's a, this is going to be, I think, a huge quality of life improvement. Definitely, yep. Lots of, uh, the Joust map released with lots of great community reception. These should be some great quality of life changes. And uh, if you're a Joust or dual player, continue to see the, send us your feedback because we're completely open to it and we're looking for it. Totally, good point. And even during PTS, we would be happy to make a few more adjustments uh, based on comments and, and feedback. So please take a look at it and let us know how you feel. All right, so we're going to move right along to item balance, and we're going to start off with Hand of the Gods. We're going to increase the damage from 150 to 170 on this consumable. Oh, number? Yeah, so uh, as a jungler, right, you had the uh, experience where you hey. got hog, maybe you were worried about an invade, and then no one came to invade. You warded up, you see it, nothing's happening, and you're like, okay, I'm just going to I'm just gonna hog the camp. And then the little minis to the sides live, and you're like, oh, no, yeah, I actually have to spend a basic attack to hit okay. them. That extra damage increase is going to help remove that feeling, as well as just give a bit more secure control when you are using it to defend against invades, um, especially if like you're trying to do purple and maybe the enemy landers come to fight you. A little bit of extra damage will help you secure as well. We were also looking at this specifically for the jungler. So if you have Assassin's Blessing, this damage mm -hmm. is amplified. Yep. This number should now let you um, clear any buff camp or back harpy camp or... Oh, wait, not mid harpies. I'm sorry. I should have I should have calculated this more closely, but <laughs> the jungler here is going to get a bigger buff from this than non junglers. So keep in yeah. mind that if you're playing this as a guardian or maybe you're using this elsewhere, you might not. Or if you let the minions get a single stack of their you know HP buffs, you might not full clear the minis with this. But this is here to make sure. Mostly this is here to hyper focus on making sure those junglers get that really clean start. All right, we're gonna kick things off. Next up is Heartseeker. Subsequent hits on the passive on the same target do 75% of the bonus damage for the next three seconds. That's a little bit of a nerf here. So Heartseeker, we've been hearing nerf requests for Fair. quite a while now. 
we want to be careful. We don't want to overdo it. We're doing a lot of tight balance with junglers. As you can see, we just made a huge conquest game feature specifically for that class. So we're, we're trying to be careful. But this item definitely feels overtuned. And when you can unload your whole kit on someone and get an additional damage proc on every single ability, that is pretty strong. So what we're doing here is you're going to just get a slight reduction in just the bonus damage from the I think item three trigger, seconds is too harsh. If you hit the same target within three seconds. Two. This is similar tech as we use on Soul Reaver, and this type of uh, solution has been really successful in the past. We think it's going to work well on Heartseeker. Notice we did 75 instead of 50, so we are open to adjusting this number up and down even further, right, Pawn? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Heartseeker has been one of the like go-to items for a lot of the more aggressive junglers. It slots in really nicely and gets a lot of extra damage. Um, reducing it to 75%, it's still going to be a very strong item, but that kind of situation where you're getting a whole bunch of extra procs, the damage is going to be reduced, hoping to bring it more in line with other options. And as you said, we'd be obviously uh, willing to make adjustments to this number to make sure that this item feels good to still buy. All right. I know a lot of you have been honest for Heartseeker nerfs, and you've got them. Thanks so much for the feedback. Next up for items, we got Mantle of Discord, and we are going to decouple the CC immunity and the stun on the passive of this item. It's now going to be a 0.3 second cast time before the stun hits. This is a really interesting change, and, and shout out to the to the Smite Pro team here at hi -Res who've been asking for this. The amount of peel, self-peel that this item provides is pretty massive, right? Um, we've even had discussed actually cutting or removing the CC immunity or the stun from it. That felt a little too intense for me. Okay. For us. What we want is have that better point? counterplay and better reactivity. So when you're fighting against someone who has a mantle, you're not just going to get insta-stunned anymore when they hit this uh, threshold. You're going to see them go CC immune. You're going to see some effects before the stun so that you can prepare to either pre-beads it or leap it or something like that uh, so you can react to it this is going to be hmm. mostly like a pro level high level nerf i think a lot of players who are still using mantle it'll still do a lot of the same things it's still gonna that makes it a lot more very good as like a one-off defensive item uh, if you're if you're ahead but it's definitely going to have a little more counterplay and a little bit more window of opportunity to punish yeah, you're going to be more reactive to, like, if someone's next to you and they have that and you see that little bit of, of warm-up, you have the opportunity to try and leap away from it or maybe pre-beads to avoid getting stunned. Um, where right now someone Especially could be fighting old, someone and be trying to watch their health pool. And then all of a sudden, like, your mage hits them really hard and suddenly you're stunned. You actually now are able to react to it. All right. Well, last up for items, we've got Ring of Hikate. We're going to be decreasing the cost from 2600 to 2500. And we're also making a change to the passive to where this item will now stack off of any target. So this item gets compared to Bancrofts a lot, especially in Mage ADC builds. We're trying to make hey, it a better replacement for that item. Oh. I don't know if we can truly replace Bancrofts. That item is very good. But we want Hikate to be able to provide you the stats you want and one people not just one thing people were saying is that the the passive was really just not very effective hitting a, an enemy god multiple times basic attacks you know you're definitely doing that from time to time but not super often not super consistently so now you're going to have that increased lifesteal pretty much all the time because you can gain these stacks from anything as long as you're in combat as long as you've been fighting something this item is going to provide a significant more amount of lifesteal than it did previously yeah, for any mage who's trying to look for some sustain, Bancroft has always been the go-to, and then pair that with Demonic Grip. This should now be much more competitive in that slot because you can actually use it to sustain against jungle camps, maybe objectives, or you can start stacking up before the fight in the lane and then take that lifesteal into the fight with you. I believe a fun fact in testing is you could even gain this stacks on towers, although you won't be lifestealing from those towers. You can yep. build the stacks so that when you get jumped you will have that life still ready to go at the time you're fighting gods. So I think that's really cool too. I think this might actually be useful Spring for ADC stuff. Item in season seven. Mage ADC. Didn't get picked up a whole lot, so hopefully these buffs change that. That wraps it up for items, and we're going to move right along to gods. First up on the list is Ares. We're going to be buffing No Escape. We're decreasing the self-slow from 50% to 30% here. Oh. Yeah, Ares can now actually, once he pulls you, he can cover some more distance to try and uh, juke maybe incoming abilities, pull people a further pull, distance yeah, into the, further. his own enemy team, or into his own team. Um, just a lot more flexibility on the ultimate to make sure that it feels impactful when Ares uses it. Now, Ares has had a hard time finding a, a true foothold in Conquest, mm -hmm. specifically. He tends to be stronger in other game modes. What we want to do is give him a little bit more control, as you can see here. His ultimate is 
his ultimate is really good, you know. It really can be very good. But stronger players are pretty good at avoiding it or, you know, cleansing it. So what we have here is that this this slow change is going to make Ares not such a sitting duck. So even if you do, even if cool. you know you hit your, you, sometimes you Ares ulting just because you know you're going to burn some beads and you're okay with that, right? And now you can do that and not also like sacrifice your entire hit point pool for it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Uh, next up on the list, we've got Discordia. Uh, we're making a change to Golden Apple of Discord, and we're increasing the projectile speed from 80 to 120. Yeah, so this the is reverse interesting because we were looking at Persephone. Huh. Um, we were looking at, at uh, just different ways for these like kind of like long range ultimates to how they feel and how they compare against each other. Um, in Discordia, there's a lot of community discussion about Discordia in general. Some people feeling like she was underwhelming. Some people feeling like she was still really strong, and people were crazy for calling her underwhelming. Um, and we just found a place that felt. That from all that feedback that felt underwhelming to her, which was Golden Apple Discord. Sometimes it was too difficult to confirm or hit on targets, um, especially if they could see it coming. Um, and so that um, speed actually explains a lot. Where that's a bit too easy. It's to always wondering why it's not. Projectile speed. We're increasing the projectile speed here. Um, and for reference on like what this kind of speed means, um, like I think Knox is 160. Um, so that's the kind of speed range that we're looking at. We're going essentially in between what she currently is and in between Knox's speed. Cool. I think this is going to feel really good for Discordia, and I like it that it doesn't actually increase her total damage potential at all. This is like a quality of life buff. It's definitely going to result in more ultimates making contact with enemies, which is going to result in her dealing more damage. But it's not the same as just a true damage buff, and I think this is one is mostly for feels reasons. Discordia is like a very tricky character from feels reasons. Like I love to tell the story about me and Pon Pon testing her strife ability in playtesting, and we would like increase the range of that ability by like five units, and everyone in the playtest would be flipping tables, and then we would decrease it by five five units, and everyone would be like, "Man, this god is weak." Like she has some very tight timings and tight decisions to be made here. So I'm I'm really excited to see that this. This sped up, I think this is going to feel a lot better. I think we were maybe a little too harsh on her and wanted to keep this slow due to her launch being strong, but now I think this is the right time and the right change to make. Definitely. We'll have to talk about Discordia. We'll see who thinks she's still strong or who thinks she's still weak after these uh, buffs come through. Next up on the list, we've got Horus. Fracture, we are decreasing the cooldown on the ability, and to the skies, uh, wow. Horus is now going to be able to move faster while selecting a target. Yeah, so Horus is uh, more of a support warrior, but he often felt kind of weird in his build decision making. Um, Fracture having a de decreased cooldown overall is going to help make him not feel so reliant on CDR and be able to flex more into watch his tank opportunities and also bully. set up just more often for his team. To the this. skies, the movement speed that he had in it limited how far he could move. We're increasing that to let him go further, so if he needs to change chase an enemy team down further or get his team further it's away massive. or maybe try and like get a longer distance teleport onto like the titan for example um he can now do that more effectively so this to the skies wow. change pon pon yes i know we're gonna really silly. we're gonna increase this number it's gonna look really large but we just want players out there to understand that diminishing returns on movement speed is a pretty intense uh, yeah. factor in smite still so although we're increasing this number to what looks like an absurd level his move th this is where we felt like this number is what made the ultimate actually feel considerably better. So it's it's not as big as it looks, but it is enough so that you can feel it, which is what we want. So yep. this is going to make this ultimate... I mean, this is already a pretty crazy ultimate if you have the right level of coordination. I'm now, this Horus is going to be able to even more crazy stuff with this. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, the number is, is plus 35% movement speed behind the ult state to 135%, but what it actually translates it into is basically a basic attack and half two basic attacks range on his actual teleport distance so he's getting it's still a lot getting further but he's not get, <laughs> going like triple the distance right 50 50 to 75 more units of distance yeah all right it is time for the buff that everybody has been waiting for <laughs> kuzenbo getting some love yes. here water bowl we're going to increase the duration here from 10 seconds to 30 seconds and my favorite change of the Whoa. match Nene long. kappa Kuzumbo can now spawn multiple names. <gasps> and then last up for Kuzumbo, yes. we're making a change to Sumo Slam and adjusting the turn radius to allow for a little bit more control over the turns. Yes. Kuzumbo is interesting. What? He's definitely someone someone that is... How cool is that? A lot of people like him for the meme factor, but we've seen him struggle a little bit to really succeed as, as a true support and really, like be a competitively viable pick how um, cool so are those changes, changes though one gave him more ability to do that but also some changes that are going to affect his overall gameplay experience where 
you throw an NA Kappa, and then you get a whole bunch of shield spike uh, returns, or shell spike returns, and then you get another NA Kappa, and you watch your first one die. That was just kind of a bad CDR thing. CDR That's being fixed. Multiple nanes. Say it with me, everybody. Multiple <laughs> nanes. Dude, it's gonna be. It's happening. Especially wait until you play him on some match of the day or something. It's gonna be a mess. But re Beautiful. realistically speaking, Kuzumbo is a tricky character to balance. He is really in your face and can do a lot of, of difficult things to deal with. So we're trying to balance him and not amp up those specific factors mostly specifically damage reflect we do not want to be buffing damage reflect mm -hmm. we've already nerfed nemian we understand that damage reflect that... can be really <laughs> frustrating we like having it in certain places but we don't want to fill in that animation. i think to me the biggest change is water bowl like the way this ability is designed it's kind of a stacking protective buff and then it's only cleared when he hits is hit by certain types of cc which is very thematic right because tipping his yep. water it was really strange to me that this had such a short duration that's why we were willing yeah, to make such a large increase cool. you should really have to knock the water out in my opinion i think we could even move this 30 seconds up even higher but i think that's gonna that passive is gonna be the big change that lets kuzumbo be a more effective tank or frontliner for his teams even without the ability to reflect damage or, or deal damage that's gonna make him a better frontliner Mm -hmm. Super excited to see these changes in game. Next up, we've got some buffs for our newest goddess to hit the battleground, Mulan. Spear Thrust is going to be seeing a speed up in the rollout of the hit area. And Divine Mastery, Mulan is now going to get what do that mean? protections by 30% when firing this ability. Fair enough. Yeah, new god release. People have been trying to figure out where exactly they want to play Mulan, how they want to play Mulan. Uh, I know a lot of people tried to play the super aggressive Mulan and found out that the ult was Doesn't difficult work. to, once you connect it with someone, they could just turn and like crack in you and you, you could potentially die. So I think people have kind of settled into their build path. Um, and one thing about this change that I really like is Divine Mastery. It's increased protections by 30%. So if you built Bruiser, you're more rewarded for this change than if you haven't. Interesting thing with new gods, you know, we always take our change? time on I didn't get that. adjustments. We want to make sure pay players learn the character before we react to them so i know there's some people out there who might be a little confused about mulan buffs maybe they were expecting nerfs you know people tend to uh, rate new gods as stronger than they actually are we haven't seen her in really ranked or pro play yet so we're not 100 percent sure but we do know that from the player feedback people were pretty frustrated about dying during divine mastery and we wanted also to design that bonus protections in a way that encourages mulan to build tanky up front so if you're playing full jungle milan that's great that can be really good but you're not going to get playing that full bonus, jungle milan does not build tank you items. if you're playing warrior milan and that's exactly <laughs> the way we intend it so it, we, we think this is going to be really important if she ends up overperforming in some of those high skill things in the future we would be happy to nerf her in other ways but i still think in the end of the day we're going to be happy that we have this new so what's that other one the area of the All pool right, next up, we've got Ra. God who hasn't seen a whole lot of love in a long time. Solar Blessing is now going to provide physical power and magical power to allied gods who are standing in Whoa. the area. This is a blast from the past. This Shout out to the closed pump. beta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Solar Blessing, for those that don't know, used to not only give power, but also take power from people who were in it. So this is kind of a partial version of that where rather than just taking power, because that's really what the protections on it that currently exist do, uh, we're giving some of that power back. So if you want to use this aggressively on a sieging a tower or a phoenix, maybe on an objective, or you're just in the middle of a team fight, you're healing your teammates and they are benefiting from this power. I'm just, just thinking like the overall utility that Ra brings to the Ra players that are going to flex this, this because it encourages you to use it in combat. They because just the drop the it on themselves and then just snipe ult the enemy fight and healing up the team. And that's why he's meta. That is not to me the healthy spot for Ra. This encourages you to fight in it. This encourages you to use it for power plays like Pawn mentioned for towers and for um, jungle bosses. So we know there's a lot of people out it's there cool. been talking about Ra. I'm really happy to see a bunch of Now people need to learn how to place it properly on a tower. All right. And last up for gods in this balance section, we've got Scylla. And we're going to be making some changes to Crush. First of all, we fixed an issue where Crush would not apply protection reduction to slow immune targets. Uh, but the change that we're going to be making here is Scylla is now going to be able to explode Crush when she is CC'd. Kind of a bug fix, but has a very important interesting balance reaction to it so this is something that from quality of life has been people have been asking for for a long time we know there's probably a lot of people out there saying Scylla does not need a buff right now but 
this one specifically, this is just really frustrating. And even other gods like Isis, they already function in this way. So it feels strange. And we're definitely going to be continuing to look at other types of gods with a similar design here and make sure we give players the control that they expect. Because a lot of times people are mashing this button. They don't understand why it's not working. It, it honestly, it felt like a bug to them. And so fixing this, I think, is going to reduce a lot of frustration from playing the character. Yeah, there's definitely a few times where you throw right underneath you and you try and get that last bit of burst damage off and the the other person kills you and then you watch them just stand in it and then walk out of it and you're like, I tried to detonate it, but it didn't work. It just it just doesn't feel right, especially when we have other characters in the game that do allow you to detonate it post, uh, like, death or CC. This should allow her to use this while dead as well, correct? Yep. Oh. I would expect it to match Isis fully now. That's Ew. what I would expect. I know we didn't have that written, but we uh, Clumsy was was leading this one, so no. we don't have him on the call right now. So we will double check and confirm that, and Scylla players get ready to be crushing people. Oh yeah. That wraps it up for balance heading your way in the Witch of the Woods update, but we've got a ton of skins coming your way too. And we're going to kick things <sighs> off with what's coming in Chapter 2 of the Grim Omens event. And we're going to start off with Acer Mulan. This is a, another Pantheon crossover skin for this show. Whoa. Yeah, and it's also the first skin for Mulan, which is really exciting. As somebody who just... Mulan is this legendary warrior that we were kind of adopting into the god Pantheons of Spice. binged five really scenes like of Vikings. Of imagining how she might travel around and like learn the ways of the combat from the other pantheons. I am here we kind of have her reinterpreted sold. as if she's been training, Mulan herself training with the Norse gods and picked up their powers and their skills and their weaponry and it just looks amazing. They yeah, were really doubling down on the training arc passive theme. All right, that's so cool. <laughs> in the kit, in the kit, in the visuals and in the skins, she's got training arc. That is Most some definitely. meta commitment. And I just love this card art and like and her skin. She looks just so strong in this uh, pose. I'm really excited wow. to play with this one. This one makes me happy. Next up on the list, we have got Rocky Road Hebo, and this is a sweet <laughs> take on the super high damage dealer Jungle Mage. He's looking what? So, awesome. so you might remember the oh. Ymir skin pictured right there. Oh yeah, you missed <laughs> the back. A gasping at Hebo's power uh, as Hebo throws sprinkles at his enemy, which that was became a really like popular inside joke for the team as we were developing the skin when we brainstorming it with the idea of just yelling sprinkles at each other and throwing them at each other <laughs> we just thought that was hilarious so we had a good bit of fun designing this skin internally just yelling sprinkles see now i just want ice cream like it's actually cold outside right now and i just want to go out and get ice cream i know right i need some sweet treats and you know what now that i think about it i feel like sprinkles hurt if they get thrown at you a lot so that kind of makes sense <laughs> Hebo, Hebo. <laughs> okay, that's for sure. I don't know about that. <laughs> Almost but... definitely, yeah. And this is going to be available in Chapter Two of the Grim Omens event. And the next skin that's in Chapter Two of the Grim Omens event is Syndicate Daji. Oh wow, that's awesome. That is also really cool. Very interesting here. So yeah, you've got a lot of focus on this kind of tattooed um, mercenary. You know, she clearly not following the rules a lot of style to her yeah that's awesome yeah definitely loving the details and the tattoos and i got a chance to see this skin in game a little earlier and the tails have a, a really cool texture treatment on them she's definitely got some style but is also super badass yeah i can't wait to see well, what i like the looks like pattern thing that continues even it's like it's very tattoo inspired as well the type of art on the tail Looks so good. Yeah, I got my first tattoo last year during the Winter Wishes charity event, and I already <laughs> want another one. And this one's, this is kind of inspiring me a little bit, so we'll see. <laughs> Next up, we want to give you guys an exclusive sneak peek at the chapter reward for chapter I say two. I that outfit. And this one is super cute. It is Kitty Cafe Artemis. Oh. <laughs> yes, this one. Oh, man. All right, so this is the chapter reward, which means... Don't uh, you already have a cute seat? ...to unlock right when... I love the and Hebo and Tusky, Lodge, though. But you will be able to, you'll be um, earning this reward through getting those skins. Uh, this is a tier four, a lot of additional stuff added to it. That cart of the cats riding, that's in the game. That is her Tusky. Oh, it is no so way. cute. That is yes, awesome. Those cats are on the cart being like palling around and being, being cute and silly. And there's a whole lot of additional effort went into the uh, effects and her traps and everything like that. The, this skin, you know, Took a took a little bit of uh, additional effort for us to no. imagine what would it be like if oh Artemis, the goddess of the hunt, was running her own cat cafe. <laughs> How would that work? And that is what we have here. 
<laughs> I have a feeling I know who, who really pushed for this idea. <laughs> I, you know, it came from a lot of places. I, I, I think Tina was definitely a champion of it. But okay, I mean, the effects are amazing. Who pitched it initially, but yes, this is awesome for sure. I mean, yeah, this definitely turned out great, and I'm just super excited. To I would, would kind of not want that skin, but still. Now. Agreed. Next up for skins. I still kind of want it. It's been a long <laughs> time coming. Valkyrie Bride Thor. Yes! <laughs> oh, yeah. Super long time. Uh, I think this quest. is... The, is finally in the game. The SPL thing. Finally did it. Look at oh Loki's troll gosh. face. Look at Loki's <laughs> troll face. Wait, you can't see oh Loki's troll god. face. Oh my god. There you go. This is amazing. I'm just gonna all this is... <laughs> the frost shines in the back are like, how could we have been fooled? <laughs> For those of you who don't get it, this is a specific reference to Norse mythology. Thor's hammer gets taken by the ice giants, and the only way they will return it is if they marry Freya to the leader of the ice giants and they don't want to do that so instead loki and thor devise a plan to go undercover to the wedding where thor himself pretends to be freya and even in norse mythology they describe how poorly put together his disguise is uh, but the ice giants fall for it and he is able to recover his hammer and that is what you're seeing here oh, oh this is so goodness. good this would be unlocked through the stretch goal of the viewer points system so oh, you'll need man. to earn viewer points to unlock it you will not have to spend viewer points on this one this one you will unlock in oh. addition to all the other things you spend your points on cool but this is the we wanted to make sure we had some really big hype skin to be like an additional stretch goal for the viewer viewer points and viewer system so that's this very is cool it. i know this my community has been asking for it for literal years and look how glorious <laughs> it is yeah thor is just rocking that dress <laughs> Most definitely. So be God sure if thighs. you haven't already, be sure to link your high res and Twitch or Mixer accounts. You could be earning points right now for watching the show. Head oh, over to the esports and live streams hub in game for info on how to unlock this skin. And the last skin that we've got up for you today is Shadow Speaker Hell. Oh, this one's really cool. We, it looks like we have expanded lore on this skin now. We have a light. <laughs> they didn't tell you that before yeah, they we kind got of out in the vote for the tier 5. A little bit <laughs> in Horus. We've been really digging this theme. You know, we started with Izanami, Opwatch, Bakasura. We branched a little bit into Fenrir, even into a little bit more of the chaotic wilderness of this possible universe. And then we were branching with the Horus a little bit into the lighter side. And now with Hell having to convey hey, both Horus dark and light, that? we kind of have an, a, a really interesting take on this skin for I really these like two this skin. themes. Definitely. This this theme is one of my favorites, and I'm just super excited really well. to see another element added to it, the light side of things. Cool. Well, certainly it has a little bit of anime inspiration, so I know you're digging it, Isaiah. Oh, yeah. But you of course me. you see a, a lot of high fantasy here, and also a little bit of like you know wilderness, jungle, nature themes, too. Yeah, Most our card art has been really, really good, and all of them are wallpaper material, but this one especially could easily be wallpaper. <laughs> really nice yeah well that wraps it up for all of the content headed your way oh, on showing that one. first but we still got the main event of the show ready for you guys baba yaga which of the woods Isaiah's eyebrows are above his glasses up right now oh we're gonna get to see the trailer oh we know that one already that's pretty good working with it Welcome I just back, like tentacles on the Baba house. Yaga, Witch of the Woods, is finally making her way Ooh, onto the battleground. That could be cool. And I've still got AJ and Maybe it's some basic attacks when you ult. All right, guys, before we get into it, Baba Yaga, who is she and, and how did she make her way onto the battleground? So, yeah, Baba Yaga is a very interesting character. Her stories kind of lead her to be this very chaotic character that sometimes she's going to help you out and sometimes she's not going to help you out. Uh, sometimes she's just going to outright hurt you or eat you if you come to her cabin uh, uninvited. Um, but she never really interferes unless people come to see her first. Um, and that's something we want to kind of bring into Smite as a whole, where she's this chaotic figure that brings kind of these random elements to the game, but she doesn't, she knows what she's doing. She knows what she's in control of. Um, she has kind of this understanding of this grand plan that just other people don't have insight into. And she's just a really interesting and unique character for the game. Really excited to be bringing her 
the community feedback was a huge part of getting mm -hmm. Baba on the schedule, and now she's finally here for real. Look at how cool and creepy she is. You could, she's going to have her house. She's going to be riding in her mortar and her pestle. She's just got all of the iconic Baba things, and we're just so, so excited. Baba yeah, things. definitely. Taking a look at her card out here, AJ, earlier you said she was going to be ugly and gangly, and uh, she is definitely that. I hope everybody is happy. I yes. mean, you know, we really want to make our players happy with each God's release. That is our goal. And I love how she turned out. She looks really cool and creepy and scary. And she's just kind of a little wacky, too. And she's right on the line of creepy and wacky. And that's a difficult spot to go for. And I think our art team and design team was just on point, though. And I love the mortar and pestle. Like, the mortar there, just like this kind of big thing that she's riding on top of. And the pestle is actually like a staff. You can see, like, the base of it is used to, like, is, like, kind of, like, flat and rounded so you can grind things with it. But then it's going to turn into this, like, like gnarly staff. It's just so cool. Definitely. And I don't know about you guys, but uh, I'm ready to see her in game. So I'm pretty sure we have that ready for you guys. Oh, and look at Oh, that. my God. She's flying the whole time. There. <laughs> yep. She is. She is definitely interesting. Should okay. I just fire off a whole bunch of things? So one gives yeah, movement speed right now, if you look at it. Okay, let's go. <gasps> Oh god, what? <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh, there it is. <laughs> oh, the house. Jesus. All right. Oh my goodness. So there is Oh, the shape. A okay, so that's a slow on. on this one. Let's go ahead and, <laughs> and start things like, off. The next with one? The it's like a Tetris shape. We couldn't have Baba Yaga without her creeping cabin. So what's going on with the passive, guys? <laughs> yeah, so her passive is, of course, her cabin, her hut. Uh, it's the thing she lives in. It has the chicken feet. You can see there it's kind of like roosting and getting and getting ready to kind of go. It's smaller than I thought. Um, and we wanted to let this be a persistent thing on the battlefield that kind of followed her around, like kind of creeps along the battlefield. You can see as I move away, it's going to start kind of moving towards me. Oh, yep. It's up. I thought it would do that. He's got so much thing. personality in a, in a living house. You know, he's like pops up and is like, oh, don't leave me. And the goal of this is, is basically as it's running around the map, it's accumulating essence for Baba Yaga. So it's it's not just kind of idling around. You can see on the passive meter that purple bar there. If I were to get hurt, so real quick, um, hit me with. Normally, I don't actually get to talk while, while typing all this stuff. You get to yeah. do the click clacks. Um, we're <laughs> we're filming this from home because we're still doing that, and you know. Oh um, right, thank yeah, you that's why they. For bearing with oh, us that makes sense now. It's... So you can see as I take damage that. Uh, energy kind of drains, and I get some health back, which is no part of the way. passive. So as yeah, it's, oh. it's basically like a mini fountain for for Baba Yaga herself, but it's not just a fountain. So you can it's see it's a home kind of, away from home. Would you say? Pop yes, <laughs> is definitely. Wait, you that. can buy stuff with it. You as can well? see as it's running around, it's getting a little bit more energy, but it has an extra component there that might change how you build Baba Yaga. So I'm gonna quickly back. Let's go buy. Something I don't know, maybe quicker a, stacking. Uh, a warlock staff. Ooh, that seems like that'd be good. She, that <laughs> seems fitting to her. Yeah, and the warlocks is... So I'm going to approach the cabin. It should be anyways. running towards me. Yep, there it is. Um, and let's see what the energy does here. And I have what? Stacks. Oh yep. my gosh. <laughs> Six. So the energy is first trying to accumulate into stacking items. So if you have a stacking item, if you have a warlock staff, if you have a hide of the urchin, well, then you don't get healed. Coin, this will actually convert that energy into stacks that item. Um, the amount of energy it takes scales the wow. stack count, so you can't just get 10 stacks of, of Hide of the Urchin for free. Right, the tougher um, ones. Yeah, so you can see I'm getting pretty good stacks of Warlock staff, but it would take quick. nearly a full energy bar to get a stack of um, Heron's Coin, for example. Haran's Coin. Right. Yep. And so if you can't, if you don't have any stacking items or you're hurt, it'll actually use a heal instead. So you can use this in multiple different ways. Oh, if you heard... Okay, so oh, Baba okay. Yaga is a mage, by the way. Yes. And it means you can play really passive, passive at the start. Creeping cabin, which has this really unique pet type of mechanics where you can't really control exactly where it runs. It does. It also gets startled by enemies, right? Yeah, so I can actually run it to these Odin bots. Makes urchin on Baba Yaga so rewarding, it, though. When it's charged up, it'll try to give you item stacks, or a if you don't tank have item stacks, it'll try to heal you. Does it do anything else? Uh, oh, so you can see when it gets near this Odin real quick, right? That little tether of, of purple energy. This is actually giving the cabin Look at the more, sex. more energy. So Something's if enemies glitched. are around it for too long, oh, you can see what? I'm getting quite more, like a lot more warlock, not staff, or warlock staff stacks. 
uh, because It'll... enemies are nearby because it's draining essence from them. They're getting a small power reduction for this. Okay, so they get Look a little how debuff that and stacks. But yeah, being near two gods for this long is like pretty uncommon. <laughs> oh, in it's, game, yeah, it's on the number of gods. A lot get, of stacks here, but if you get too close, the cabin uh, is. Uh, 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 Oh, there he goes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, it didn't like that I spawned something on top of it. Oh. Yeah, it was a little confused if an enemy gets, spawn. But... If an enemy gets too close, it's just going to run away. So enemies have ways of, like, if this is getting in people's <laughs> ways or or if they're draining essence and they want to get rid of it, they can just run to it and the cabin gets startled and runs. Awesome. So we're going to go through cool. your abilities next. You can see them across the bottom. Um, those are some temp icons. You'll see a few other temp assets in here. You know, we're working from home. Things are all coming together greatly. But th a few things are going to be streaming in throughout PTS, so... Uh, yeah, let's see ability one. I just realized very that Ajax actually kind of sounds so sick. So first ability is Wild Witchcraft. Yeah. Uh, you can see that this targeter is different than maybe when I used it before. It's a kind of like a right L shape, and it has some kind of frosty effects. When I fire this, the projectile is going to travel that path. And you can see my passive meter is now changed to kind of a purple L with an X, and this is actually a silence field. So projectile has a path and it has a field it leaves behind, and they're both rolled randomly every single time you cast this ability. So we got right oh, L, it. silence. Getting a lot okay. of Ls. Yep, right L, <laughs> protection. Just like my weekend. <laughs> there you go, now we have a different yeah, shape. Yeah, it's a circle. So now we have a circle that is a oval. slow field. Yeah, over. Right, so, so this is speed. one of the most unique, slow, random shield in all of Smite. And as you mentioned on the intro, Kind of Baba's personality. How are you going to juke that? It's always different. As chaotic, and that's where we translated that into these chaotic spells. I guess it's too hard to hit solo yep. like the L. And shape. you can see that there's a slow field and a silence field, which debuff your enemies. But there's also these protection and movement speed fields that, if we can get them to roll, see here's a protection field. When I stand inside of it as an ally, I get bonus protections being inside this and it persists for a little bit after i leave in this one wow there's a lot of them right in this field nice. so sometimes you roll helpful effects to oh, help oh your wow and sometimes Without you boots. roll harmful effects to hurt your enemies and playing around that and playing around with the different shapes and different hit areas like for example like normally like this is a about 55 range you wouldn't be able to hit this odin if you aim it to the right and you mess around with that shape a little bit, you get some extra range. And so learning I, these shapes is going to be a very interesting part of it. I gotta say, in playtesting, that is like one of the most fun things to do with her. You're like aiming off to the side, and the opponent's like, oh, okay, no problem. And then it just takes a right turn at you. You gotta always <laughs> it implies be your it hasn't moved since. I love how Baba always knows what she's going to cast next. Yes. So she can always be prepared. But as an enemy, you never really, I really know like this going to at you. It's going to be super annoying to play Definitely against, but I really like the concept. The randomness and the chaotic nature of Bobby Yaga. It's super cool. And uh, speaking of randomness, uh, let's go ahead and move into Baba's next ability, Baba's Brew. Yep. So oh, they're both uh, random? Baba's right. Brew lets her actually Whoa. use her Mortar and Pestle to craft a potion. Um, and the ingredients that she throws in the potion are random. So you can see when I hit the button, I kind of brew this potion. And uh, this one is, let's see, two Eyes of Newt two dragon scales and one wolf tooth which is basically each ingredient is going to empower this potion in a different way so you can see what? when i throw that potion it does it goes out explodes and it's going to deal damage uh, for each red ingredient so store or it. newt, it's going to increase the damage of it a little bit for each scale of dragon it's going to add a slow to it and this slow will, will stack an in intensity per ingredient and for each uh green ingredient or wolf tooth you actually get a power reduction and attack speed slow applied to your enemies that are hit by this so when I throw this one, it's a normal potion damage. It's been amplified a little bit by a red ingredient, and this is going to heavily slow that Odin. Um, I yeah, believe it's... Crazy. Oh, so it's, it's actually not just three potions. That was a 50% slow applied it's to Three mix effects. He was hit. So you can see, I, I brew these potions, and I get these different ingredients, and when I play around with these different ingredients, I get, I'm going to apply different debuffs or deal more damage based off what I get. But that's not all. You can be like, hey, this potion is pretty good. I might want to save it for later. I don't really have a use for it right now. You right-click, or you so you cancel it, or you refire the ability, and now it's in your consumable slot. And you can see here, this what? is a temp icon. Yes, but, okay. So, again, oh. we're working from home. We're trying to get all this in for PTS so you guys can play with it. Temp icon for now, but you can see I have this potion in my consumable slot. If I use it, it pops right back out, and I can use it again. <laughs> that is so you heard cool. it here she first. Baba Yaga players will never ward. Yeah. Correct. <laughs> Which actually lets her, you can only pocket one potion at a time. No, what's up to level 12. You can, essentially in the future, you can pocket one and then wait until your cooldown is up 
and then throw the one from your pocket and throw the one you brewed back oh, to wow. back, which is a pretty strong power play. Yep, and you can see I have a potion out right now, and I also have a potion in my consumable slot. I can swap between them at will, so I can just bring out the one that suits the situation, um, and then I can throw one out, pop another Rip one. Rip to everyone who has their consumables so on the back team by name. A lot of flexibility for in this move. Usage. A lot of learning and a lot of practice. Like when you learn to not just quick throw, when you get one of those super slow potions and save that for when you're in trouble, or when you get one of those super damage ones and save that for when you really need it, that is how you go from a good Baba player to a great Baba player. So you can see, oop, Cabin, hello. He got his paths around a little randomly, which is also intentional too, right? Yes, he has he... some random pathing, because if when you walk around the map, if it's going to follow you, so it might give some information to your opponents. It has some random elements there, and you can see it kind of triggered there, so that you don't always know where, where the cabin is kind of going and what direction it's heading towards. Oh, you can skull. see, yep. So you can see now I have a, a another potion I can cast. I brew one. Uh, I'm going to use the other one that I had stored. I'm going to throw that one. And bring this one out through that one. So that's how this ability functions. It still takes a, a moment to random ingredients. Huh? If you find a potion that you think you're going to need for later, so let's say you get a five damage potion, you're like, no, nah, I have to save this for the team fight, <laughs> right? You can pocket that one and save it for for that team fight when it occurs. Definitely. Man, I just have the biggest this. smile on my face already. For sure, yeah. I'm loving this recurring theme of like the randomness. Baba Yaga always knows what's about to happen, but her enemies might not necessarily know. That's super cool. Well, they can see her holding the potion, right? So you can get an idea yep. for what type of potion she's got. If you see a whole bunch of red or a whole bunch of blue, you might know what to. As if you're gonna see it. that in time, though. Yeah, and it's but... traveling towards. You can see that the the colors that are swirling around it are are indicative oh. of the ingredients that are inside of it. Yeah, the projectile itself that looks really good. Yeah, and also the potion uh, color changes. So you can see here the potion itself right now is blue, and when I throw it, it's going to have a blue bit of explosion in it, to signify oh, yeah. that that was a majority blue potion or majority red potion. So there's some definitely other tells that exist. So there's like what, the four potion effects. colors, right? One majority yep. for each color, and then there's the split one. Yep. And so this one was a blue. I'm going to throw this one. See if I can brew a neutral one. So yeah, here's the neutral one, which has no majority ingredient. The 2 2 so you can one. See, Yeah, 2 2 one. It has most colors in here, and when I throw it, it has a bit of a more kind of colorful emissive. Okay, nice. Crazy. Well, this kit is really taking us into stratosphere already but we're gonna blast off even further right pawn let's do good it. segue so the third ability is blast off uh baba yaga goes into her mortar for protection uh so let's say you're in the middle of a team fight and you're about to get krakened you can jump into the mortar for protection and then while you're inside so baba yaga builds up magic that explodes sending her flying off in a direction <laughs> or damaging people that are nearby right yeah, this ability is so fun to use. Oh. It's kind of a risky damage ability where you kind of dive in with the with the warm-up and then turn and burst yourself out. <laughs> it's oh. so wacky. It's a really unique movement ability. That is cool. Uh, it gives her strong prote protective stats while she's inside <laughs> of her mortar, but she still can be interrupted, right, Pawn, by stuns, Correct. silences, The leap cripples, range is pretty good. Um, yes, she has knockback protection. Um, which okay, is the only protection it. she has. So, yeah, so if I get stunned here, if I get crippled, or if I get silenced, it's going to end the effect. Oh. Um, and I'll... I will and put it on cooldown. Correct, and put on cooldown. So there is counterplay to this ability. Baba Yaga has to be careful with with how she's using this ability to make not sure like that she's not stunned out in a bad spot. <laughs> right, the other day I was playtesting Baba, and I got ganked by a Kali, and I tried to quick um, blast off, and Kali just stunned me out of it. And I was like, uh-oh. Bad timing, so you really have to be a little careful when you're gonna. <laughs> that fire means this it's gonna be very uh, rough against ganks. Up. Like it's not gonna. Most. Yep. Yeah. Really cool yeah. stuff. People going on. just hold this. This ability for also feels really good because you get a little bit of a movement speed boost. But then she also can stack so easily because you're jumping into the mortar, them. and that helps you like maybe close the distance to get in range for damage or juke a little bit. So there's a lot of like small subtle things on this ability to help it feel really good to use as well. It just fits her tone and her theme really well too, because I know you know we've talked a little bit of creepy and a little bit of wacky. This ability is just straight fun, which I'm, I love to see. For sure. And uh, speaking of tone and her character as a whole, like I said earlier, you can't have Baba Yaga without her home sweet home. So let's uh, let's talk about the ultimate. Yep. So this is where we finally get to bring the cabin more directly into the fight. Uh, Baba Yaga calls down her cabin. Uh, it crashes down on her, knocking opponents away if they're too close. So we'll show that off first real quick. So I call it down. Set Odin flying back a little bit. Oh, yeah, and now I'm inside well. the cabin. And Baba Yaga is in this cabin brewing up some, some witch fire magic. And this witch fire magic, when thrown, explodes on the target area that it hits, as well as it leaves a fire patch on the ground that creeps after enemies. So you can see here, I'm in here. I get four shots of this witch fire. And if I throw it, 
oh. lands, explodes, and it also chases opponents down. Oh, that's awesome. So not well, only when it, burns, it first fires is it going to deal some pretty impressive damage, but if you get people stuck in it, if they're CC'd, or if they just can't get away, they're going to take continual burning damage from this effect. Now, Baba is fully attackable and um, vulnerable while she's in the cabin. She just gets a little bit of a health shield there. Correct. She gets a small health shield to indicate the cabin's providing her some extra protection, but she is, she's CC immune, but she can be entirely damaged. She can be killed in this state. So she has to be a little bit careful when she's when she's playing. Oh, with this okay. So like, if she just jumps into the enemy team and they burn her down, she can definitely be killed. And you can see a little bit of there of the cabin jumping around a little on outro. We're definitely aware yeah. of that, still working toward it for PTS, but. This ability is a really cool mage ultimate. It lets you put out a lot of damage. I thought the potions are going to have more. If are really aware of it, see it coming, they can avoid it pretty easily. Maybe they scrap that. If you flank a fight and throw this into a pile of enemies and they are not paying attention, what's and going they on? They end up letting those stacks, uh, those different witch fire <laughs> what's happening? pile up on them. They start taking damage from all of them individually all at once. You can put out an absurd amount of damage really quickly if you place it, if you place this in time this correct. Yeah, I think we worked out the damage should be something around, like, Anubis Ult, if you were to be hit by every single one and stand in it for every single tick, you can take some serious damage. Of course, enemies will have movement ability to get out of it, and there's a it's long pretty rare. time, right? Like, the, the amount of time in between each shot is, is relatively significant. I can't just spam fire it super fast. So it's unlikely that you're going to get all the damage out, but in the middle of a giant team fight where there's five people you could potentially hitting, you're bringing, you're putting out a lot of damage in that fight. And just shout out to the animation team. You can actually see Baba with like some kind of cartoony proportions, like reaching out of the windows and chimney and stuff to throw these fireballs out the front door. It is like, out. It's so fun. And we, we got a little bit of this, uh, a feel for this ability in that amazing cinematic trailer we made before it, before for we sure. started the Baba segment, right? How awesome was that? Yeah, that yeah, cinematic that was... was so cool. Yeah, we were absolutely. watching like little pieces of it come in over time and I was like, this is just gonna be incredible. Yeah, it was so awesome. So Baba Yaga is our next mage hitting the battleground. Are you guys thinking she's going to stick to that traditional mid-roll, or do you think she's going to be able to flex anywhere else? I think she definitely has potential to be a strong mid laner. Um, I think there's some room for her to potentially be in the solo lane with the little sustain that she can get from her cabin, but I think other kind of bruiser mages do that better. So I, I just expect her to be more of the traditional mid mage. She's got to be really I'll hard to play, just from the RNG element, I think. Ooh, awesome. The numbers are not well, crazy. We've covered all the abilities. Let's take a second and listen to Baba Yaga's voice. Oh, wondrous. You sure are. Uh, something. Attack. Defend. Baba knows best, dearie. Disturbing Baba Yaga while she is resting. Oh, not how I would choose to leave this world. <laughs> Tons of character that there. taunt just, animation I was know. amazing. I, I was about to say, like, the character that she brings along with those voice lines. Oh, it's so good. I, I really like how we got this kind of creepy old lady voice, but we got a little bit of that Slavic accent in there, too, so you just get a good feel for her cultural background. It's awesome. Oh, and the recall, just yeah. the drop. As soon as that drop hits, it's like, poof, and she's gone. It's so <laughs> Look good. At the, the, the mortar and pestle working itself. That's some classic witchcraft. Yeah, the, the animation team did a great job on this character. Oh yeah, there's gosh. a lot of like little flavor bits. Like I don't know if people were, were noticing earlier on where occasionally she'd reach out and grab this butterfly and just shove it into her mortar and start grinding it up. Just mash it. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, we saw it a few times throughout the, the video today. So of course, you know when you when you're expecting it, you don't see it. But when you never know, it'll show up at any time. But we definitely saw it a few times, and we'll, I'm sure we'll see it again. For sure. All right, and while we've got got you here, Pon, let's take a look at uh, the recolors for Baba Yaga. Okay. Oh, yeah, we're going to have two different recolors. We have the one you can purchase with Favor. Uh, I was going to say, it's going to be green, isn't which it? Is this one, the green one. <laughs> nice. Of course. Yeah, so you get a, a different color theme to it, as well as if I go to the cabin, which I, I kind of left behind. It's The it's house changes its way. colors. It's making its way. <laughs> look at it run down the <laughs> lane. Come. Hey, Dude, there is sometimes in the middle mom. of the jungle and like the middle of the fog, you just don't see it and all of a sudden like it pierces through the fog. It's, it's genuinely creepy and mad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's some green, more green highlights on it. Okay, so the, the cabin changes colors too. That is amazing. Yep. So we're gonna oh, have a so gold cabin? Oh, there's the butterfly. She was just about yep. to grab it. Yeah, I moved. I interrupted yeah. it. You, so we also uh, got the, the other one as well, right? The season ticket. Recolor. Or season pass 2020, yeah. Season pass, my bad. Yeah. So yeah, get the cabin out of the remember. ground. It doesn't like it being spawned in the way no. that I'm doing it. <laughs> and it's so, a nice orange red color. 
looks good. Yep. So every Halloween god release this year vibes. is going to get an additional limited recolor as a part of the season pass. And this one for Baba Yaga looks really awesome. And then, of course, we also have our mastery skins, right? Still sure, wondering oh, yeah. how many people actually have that These pass. are going to launch with Baba Yaga. I know we started Oh, it is actually... Oh. Uh, I know players really appreciate it. It's a golden house. A broken golden house. Also, no. one thing that I didn't get to show off, um, it looks a little bit weird because I'm switch classing the way that I am. When you first spawn, the hut actually spawns in front of you. So it'll actually have a little bit of, like, it'll be in front of wherever you spawn into the match. That golden cabin. Looks so good. Golden Go blue. Honestly, the golden cabin looks bad. Now, you know, people bad, were talking about it, okay um, it, but I don't know if anyone quite figured it out about the little uh, teaser spoiler we did for Baba Yaga. Well, oh, yeah. Now that you see her using all these potions, maybe they get it. But actually, it was a really rare chance to trigger her laugh when you drank a potion. Yes. Mm -hmm. A lot of people thought it was different maps or stuff like that. I don't know if anyone actually connected it. it. It has to do with drinking a potion. Yeah, I don't Yeah, I don't think anyone connected the dots. That was a really fun teaser. And hey, I what? people were like, I hear Baba Yaga randomly in game. I don't know where it's coming from, but I'm getting freaked out. Oh, yeah. I've never heard that, I think. I also love the coloration. Well, I must have just missed it if it had. Oh, the black so and good. gold. Legendaries are always my favorite. Black and gold is such a classic color combo. Even on the gods that have diamond, I tend to use these legendaries. Yeah. But, oh, the diamond looks really cool for her. Nice. Definitely love the colors on those. And, you know, she's got, a, she's got a house made out of diamonds. Right? Yeah. She's <laughs> rich, huh? I actually don't like awesome. the mastery and, colors and that much. I, mean, I think your default... You can spend a lot of time just looking at this cabin. There's actually. so many, like, little details on it from, like, the weather vane and, like, the chimney to, like, this little side area and, like, the, the, the kind of, like, pottery and... And like the the bones on the on the actual wooden fence parts, like there's just so much on this cabin. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. living, breathing character, really. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's literally awesome. breathing. <laughs> <laughs> it is so cool. For, yeah, our entire concept team and art team really killed it with this cabin, making it feel you know like it has its own personality in game, and like it's fighting alongside Baba Yaga on the battleground. Well, awesome. Yeah, yeah, so it's cool. Baba Yaga. I'm sure people are going to be stoked to play her on PTS when it goes up on Friday, right, Isaiah? Yep, we are shooting nice. for PTS to be live on Friday. Be sure to keep keep it locked on our official social media channels. We'll be sure to let you guys know when it goes up. We're definitely looking forward to seeing you guys get your hands on the Witch of the Woods. But the show's not over yet. We've got a live Q&A that is headed your way. Thanks so much for tuning in for the Baba Yaga reveal. We'll be right back after this quick break. What is happening? Mods and modesses, get ready for your favorite Smite show. No, not top five plays. It's time for Hey Zeus. And hey to you, everybody. We've got a great show for you today. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm welcome to Baba Yaga, Witch O the Woods. Oh, Baba. Do we not pay Raijin for electric this month? Not a fan. Hello, dear. Would you like some Worthers? Oh, 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 oh no, thank you, sweetie. <laughs> She's so nice. Good, because you're worthless. Wait, you're not Keanu. Oh, Perrin, of course I'm not. What the f is a Perrin? So this probably goes without saying, but are you my kid? Oh, Perrin, of course not. Why, you have any spare? Spare? <laughs> I guess there's a couple I can think of. He stopped calling after his remodel. Maybe we can come up with some sort of arrangement. How about you take my last one? Persephone! She's been causing a lot of trouble lately. Could I get the pomegranate on the side? Hold on there. Would that make me Papa Yaga? No, it just makes you a bad father. I've invited an evil force to my show. How could I be so foolish? The gods have abandoned me. Now there's no hope. Anywho, how does it feel to be on the battleground of the gods? Oh, dearie, it's just wonderful. Just, okay, can I be real for a second? We are animated, so I don't know how to respond. Uh, I'm only here because I need space to park this f***ing house. Oh, that's yours? I thought we just got you a nice trailer. Well, my reveal trailer was pretty good. The house, though, garbage. Your house moves by itself? Talk about a mobile home! Oh, Shut up. <laughs> Actually, dear, my legs suffer from something called bony syndrome. B.S. And with my f***ing garbage house, I had to find a new way to get around. So you, uh, ride a bowl? Sounds like me driving in L.A. Actually, 
Actually, it's a mortar. It's where I brew my potions. Hey, kids at home, don't brew in Brive. Oh, Perrin. Sorry, is there a cat here? What? Because there's no Perrin around here. I have a question for you. Hey, that's my job. Would you mind house-sitting for a while? Yes, he says hesitantly. House! I beckon you! Get oh, yeah. Wow, talk about a full house. Coming up next, we've got Hades with his tips for getting sun in an eternally dark underworld. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. So, uh, Baba is you? Is you that Baba? Okay. Time to get done. What's going on, everybody? I hope you guys enjoyed the update show. Tons of stuff going on. And that those Hayes Zeus episodes, man, they crack me up every time. We're here to hang out with you guys and answer your questions. We are live. We've got chat up to hang out with you guys. All right. I'm not sure how long the q and I guess going to go. Skins. I've got Pon Pon with me. How you doing today, man? I think we might call it here. Yeah, especially if the conditions stay like that. Right, I'm just gonna see go. if the patch is already out. Man, we're super excited, excited to see all the chat going and people will be excited about Bobby Yaga. So awesome, cool. I've got a little bit of audio issues on my side. <laughs> a little bit. We'll just get right into it. So we're here okay? hanging out with chat, answer some questions. Yeah, I can hear you now. We're all good. Uh, so I'll give you a softball while we get ready. I know you've got the dev client ready to kind of show off some of the skins, but uh, I had a couple people ask me, like, were there any favorite Baba Yaga stories that you had and kind of kept in mind when you guys were designing the character? Okay, I feel like this segment is going to be a little bit draggy and uh, the, the way that's currently being handled, I don't know. I think I'm gonna uh, dip out here and talk about the, the patch notes review and stuff that's coming up. And this one will just be something. If you wanna watch it, you'll have to watch it live. I think the live, uh, you have to watch it on, on Twitch or it might go up on YouTube as well. I don't know. Maybe it goes up separately. Anyways, I'm gonna bounce over to the written patch notes and we'll talk about those in a bit. And for now, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope to see you for the next one in just a little bit. Duke Sloth. Out.